Okay. Hey ben. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. Good. What is the password for the meeting? Is it one for the the password for the meeting is 140159. <laughs> Yeah, the password for the meeting is 140159. I've shared it in the chat section. And please, those recording, I'm not seeing you. Is there any challenge, please? Okay, you are recording. All right, sure. Thank you very much. Okay. So, Seven, you can, you can. Pro pro proceed. Okay, so um, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Very clear, sir. Very well. Okay, so um, yesterday we began with um, the issues uh, in involved when it comes to time value of money. Um, amen. Please make me a co-host. Uh, co okay, I've not been made a co-host. Check check the Ben Safo. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Um, no. Miss Mark, Anna, may kindly make say, Ben Osafo, the name Ben Osafo, a co host, all right? Oh, okay, okay. All right. all right, so we we tried to look at the issues in there, and we mentioned that you know, when there are a series of payments, you go by the approach we call um, annuity. And for that matter, we were able to solve some questions yesterday, all right? We, we also indicated that sometimes you may have a lump sum of money being involved. And if you're looking at it in the present terms, then you have to discount whatever the future value is to get a present value. Similarly, if, if you want to look at the future value of a present money or some money today, which is a lump sum, then you will only do a compounding. And then some interesting issues popped up. We discussed all such matters. So yesterday, before we ended, I gave you an assignment, right? To go and work the time value of money questions in there. And we'll, I'll take the answers today. But before we, we, we go into In my class, it is a participatory class. And I've, I've told you time without number that. In my class, there is no right or wrong answer. Tell me what you know. If it is wrong, we will try and then bring you to terms with what we think is right. Okay, so Bismarck, are you there? Okay. Yes, Bismarck. yes, I'm around. Uh -huh. Bismarck, can you help us with the formula for discount factor? Discount factor. We said discount factor is simply what? Hello, Bismarck. If Bismarck is not ready uh, with the answer, one over. It's one over. One over. It's bracket one plus R. Bracket to choose the bar end. Good. Um. For those of you who are hiding from me, I'll just go to the chat list and then try and see if I can get some names. Okay, Princess Quay or Princess. Is it the same princess who has seen to is Princess? Yes, any of the princess. EAR, yes, effective annual rate, which tells us the true or effective rate that is being charged annually. Yes, what is the formula? Princess, EUI, yes, give us the answer. 
Your hand is up. Okay, so the formula is one yeah. into bracket one plus r bracket okay. plus raise the power n. Mm -hmm. Continue. Minus right. one. Minus one. Yeah, my, minus one. Yeah. Okay, that is that is the formula. Thank you very much. And we're able to use this to be able to tell what the annuity formulas will be. Okay, so for present value ordinary annuity, we said that it is simply, um, where are you people? I, I can't see your names again. Uh -huh. Johnson, John. Johnson, I want a fast response, okay? So. Um, hello, sir. Yes, what's the um, formula for perpetuity? Um, Johnson is actually a, it's not a member of this class. He's actually helping me with a recording. So uh, probably. Oh, <laughs> Johnson, don't know. worry. But then actually, Kabibi. What the Kabibi? What does it? <laughs> okay. Anyway, Janet. That's C over R. C over R. C over R. Now we are doing present value. What do we do? Anytime we are in the future and we want to come to get present value, what do we do? What do we do? Obinewa, did you join us yesterday? Even if you didn't, tell us what is it? Obinewa, if you are moving from future to present, what do we do? Janet. Yes, please. What do we do if we are moving from future to present? What do we do? Of the perpetuity. No. Anytime you have some money in future and you want to determine its present value, what do you do to that money? We discount. Anytime you are dealing with present value, we should be seeing some discount stuff in there, all right? And we have defined what discount factor is. We know that to be one over the bracket of one plus n, okay? Right. Now, if we are doing annuity due, what do we do to this to get annuity due? Yes, quickly, this is just a revision. This is a revision and then we'll, we'll take some, some of the questions. Then we'll start what we are supposed to do today. Yes in the second half. What do we do to this formula to get annuity due? Anthony. Yeah, hello, yes. sir. Yes, sir, go ahead. Yeah, you, you just multiply the answer you get by one plus R. One plus R, that's good, that's correct. Okay, and we have explained why we are doing all these things already, okay. Now let's look at the future value, future value. Now we begin with ordinary annuity, okay? Ordinary annuity. Um, NS, NS Nati, uh, please, are you going to be a vice chancellor in the near future? Do you want to be the vice chancellor? NS, you know why I'm asking you that? Hello, NS. Awo? Awo? How are you yes, there? Sir. Good. Yes, sir. Can you tell us what the formula should be for future value ordinary annuity? Mm -hmm. C over R. C over R. And the EAR formula. EAR formula. Good. That's fine. Um, if you're, if you're iPhone, if you're, which iPhone are you using? When you come to school, bring it to me. Yes, Afia, what do we have to do to this to get future value annuity due? What do we have to do? Hello, Afia's iPhone. Afia. Okay. Laurisha Morgan. Morgan. 
All right. Yes, sir, Abna, your hand up. So please, you multiply by one plus R. You have to simply multiply by one plus R. Okay. Now, the question is, when do we use all these formulas that we have simply talked about? When do we use it? Yes, anybody with an answer. When do we use present value, this long formula, or up to this point, whichever formula, when do we use them? Let's say something. The answer you are saying in your head is correct. How do I hear it in your head? Yes, go ahead. Just, just say something. Can be, be. Oh. Yes, I'll okay. Janet. Yeah, I think you use it when you are making um, fixed payments at regular intervals. Exactly. If you are making constant payments over a period of time with regular intervals, what we call series of payments, i.e., when you are dealing with annuity, that's when. You do it. But the question is, thank you. That's, that's the answer I wanted. Another question I ask is that, when do you use ordinary annuity? And when do we use um, annuity due? Yes. Yes. How, when do we use ordinary annuity? And when do we also use annuity due? Okay, uh, I want to check something. Some people have raised their hand. Benny K, Benny K, when do we use ordinary annuity? For Benny, uh -huh. ordinary oh. annuity is when the payment is at the end, is at the end of year or oh, in arrears or year from. Yeah. Yes. Beginning one year from now. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, David. David, when do we use annuity due? When do we use those annuity due formulas? David, I saw your hand up. Okay. If it's not there, Aram. Aram, when do we use that? We use annuity when the payment is made at the beginning of the period. The beginning. Or, or, Lorisha. Or when it is made in Lorisha Morgan. Annuity due when it's made at the, at the beginning of the year or the period. Or, when the payment is made, yes, in Francisca. Advance. Okay, in advance, that's fine. Or beginning immediately, okay? And we are able to use this from there to solve some questions here today. All right. Um, Ebenezer, can you help us with the question? Can you roll it up so that we are able to pick some two, three questions and then we try? Hello, Ebenezer, are you here? Yeah. Any, yes, any of the I'm Sam. I'm here. Um, Irabna, if you could help us with that. I'm not using my laptop today, so it's making it difficult. But, okay. So okay. please, Irabna. All right, sure. Thank you very much, Irabna. You're welcome. You're welcome. Huh? Cool. Uh, yes, yeah, while the Rabna is to... that, yes. Yes, any question, yes. Yeah, um, sir, please, with the... Um, I, I, I was not paying so much attention to the side where you said uh, when we use the pressure in the future, I think someone gave an answer, but I didn't really hear that part. Well. What did the person really say so that I can be able to understand what the challenge is? What was it the question I asked? What do you do if you are moving from future value to present value? Yeah, it started from there. Well, if you say it started from there, I wouldn't know. But if that is the question, then we are really saying that. I think it was the one who answered that question also. 
Janet, can you help us with the question that you have answered so that we can address this problem? Well, for me, I just answered um, what I mean by annuity. That I make uh, regular payments, like a fixed payment at regular intervals. Okay. It, was that oh, your problem? Okay. Or you just no, want say to hear in relation to the <laughs> <laughs> All right. So it was relation to the present value and future value formula. Yeah, yes, you were yes, talking yes, about yes. it. And when I mentioned that it was, I think you asked for the perpetuity, and yes. I said it is C over R. Then uh -huh. you added the one minus DF. Uh, is it the yes, one minus the DF? Uh -huh. So say I think you asked the question in relation to that. Is it when it is used or something? Yes, I asked. Anytime you are moving from future value to present value, i.e., when we are determining a value for the present, what do we do with discounts? That's that's all we said. And that's why I put the discount factor uh -huh. formula there. Uh -huh. So even if you forget the, the, the formula, you simply ask yourself anytime you are moving from future value to present value, we discount. So if you are determining a value for the present terms, then you should see a discount factor formula playing somewhere around you know, your. Your formula. Are you getting that point? All right. Mm, yes, sir. All right. Okay. That's why when I began, I made you tell me what the formulas were for discount factor in EAR before we move to annuity. Okay. Yes. So, um, Rabna, can you move to question number eight? I want you to solve and then I'll ask questions, then you solve and tell me what the answer should be. Okay. So, Question eight, okay. Your roommate in Legon Hall, I mean, let's say you're an investor, but whoever it is, offers to pay you an annuity of 2,500 at the end of each year for three years in return for cash today. there and analyze. Is this a one lump sum or it is an annuity? Annuity. It is an annuity. Do you all agree? Everybody yes. should say yes because it is yes. said in the question that annuity. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah, even, yeah. even without the annuity, you realize that they said 2,500 at the end of each year. It means that this is a series of payments. Is that you getting the point? Right. Yes, yes. Please. That is what makes it an annuity. Then you ask yourself. What does this 2,500 represent? So is, it, is it a cash flow? Yes. OK, so anytime I ask you what does it represent, just tell me which, which variable in the formula it represents. That's all. So if it is R, if it is okay. N, if it is C, you tell me it is C. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. okay. Now, it said 2,500 at the end of each year. At the end of each year, which type of annuity is that? Ordinary. Ordinary. Ordinary annuity. Please, are you getting the point? And the three years will definitely be your end. Is that not so? Yeah. Okay. So this is what is happening. Somebody, your roommate, tells that, okay, I want some money today. Okay. When I'm repaying that money, I'll pay you 2500 at the end of each year for three years. Are you getting the point? So it means that if we are not going to take any interest, if there is no interest, how much were you going to give to him? He's saying that give me some money today. I need some money today, okay? But when I'm repaying the money you have given me, I'll give you 2,500 each year for the next three years. Okay. 7,500. Exactly. So if you're not going to take any interest, or interest was not going to accrue on the money that you give to him today, then you are going to have seven to give him 7,500 today. But remember, you should give him a smaller money so that when the interest adds up, it will be 7,500. Please, are you getting the point? Now, the, the question says you could earn 5.5 .5 on your investment in your money, on your money in other investments with equal risk. All right. What is the most you should pay for the annuity when? When are you paying for that? So the question I'm simply asking is, are we going to find a present value or a future value? 
present value. Yes, we are going to find present value because it is that money you are going to give to the person today so that he gives you 2,500, 2,500, 2,000 in three years. I get in the point. So you know it is an ordinary annuity. You know it, you are finding a present value and you know that and are also giving. Find me what the answer should be. Anybody with an answer? The week. Okay. <laughs> e? Go ahead. I want you to watch and tell me the answer. Yes. Anita. E? I had I had six thousand seven hundred and forty four point three. Okay, six thousand seven hundred and forty four point three. Is the answer in the question? Yes, please. It is a, a e. Okay, e rather. Hey, are you part of those people who calculate get e and shade a? Okay, that's the. No, fine. please. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, please go for the question again. I don't understand why it is. Now, okay, yeah. so so what we are simply saying is that your friend wants you to give him or her some money, okay, today. And in paying that money back, instead of giving the same money back, he's going to pay you 2,500 cities at the end of each year for three years. So what he is saying is that give me 6,744 cities today. And when I'm repaying, I'll pay you 2,500 cities, 2,500 cities, 2,500 cities. Because remember, if you give the person 7,500 cities today, and the person splits the money two, five, two, five, two, five in three different years, you'll be losing. Is that not true? Because what you can do with 7,500 cities in year one, you cannot do with 2,500 split into three in three different years. No, you cannot do that. So we are saying that anytime somebody wants to borrow money from you and wants to pay, in future, give him something small today and expect that the person will pay something big. So if, if you give the person a thousand cities, you expect that when the person is repaying, you pay you say 1,200, 1,300. Are you getting the point? If you read the question, the question says that your roommate offers to pay you 2,500 cities at the end of each year for three years in return for cash today. So what the question is trying to say is that determine the cash you give to that person so that you receive the 2,500 cities each year for three years. That's all we are trying to do. Is the question clear now? Yeah, yeah, very clear. Right. So we are trying to determine how much we will give to you. So it means we want to give the money to you today. That's why we are finding present value. Okay. And we cannot use the lump sum because here it is 2,500 cities at the end of each year, which makes it an annuity. So we go for present value. Two thousand five hundred. Two thousand five hundred. Uh, yes. What was R? Uh, so, um, five point five percent. That's zero point zero five 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 five. Okay. One is one minus one over one plus zero point zero five five raised to the power what? How many years? Three. Three years. Okay. 
Yes. The rest yeah. is for you to use a calculator to punch, and you should have the answer. Please have your point. Are you okay? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Um, probably uh, a question will be formed then uh, you would have to like it's present value but it won't be in this format but it would be pre present value I just wanted to find out I don't understand what you are trying to say but if, if you mean that we can you can be asked to calculate some present value but you don't use this formula no, not what present you value without it. No, please. I want to find out let's present value, but probably the question will be formed differently or something. Uh, well, unless maybe you tell me, but there are so many different ways we can frame the questions, okay? And but the whole concept doesn't change. If it is if you are able to identify the elements in the question and see that it is present value, ordinary annuity, unless there's something in the question that requires you to do some other thing, this is the formula you are going to do use, okay. Uh -huh. You can set the questions in so many ways. We can tell you that you receive one today, that day that you are giving the money to the person. We can tell you that you receive the first pay payment on that same day. It means the present value of that money is 2,500. So you do 2,500 plus, but that's not our focus. You know, There are so many ways we can set the questions. So, I mean, as and when it comes, read Before, the question, identify the elements, and then unless you have a question of that sort, you may want us to try. Uh, no, please, because I usually find it uh, hard challenges when determining whether it is future value or present value, because they seem to have almost the same element or similar elements. Yes, they're fine. They are C, R, N, they are all the same. But the question is, you ask yourself, are we determining the value today or in future you know if if you recall yesterday what we did we we we, we did uh, we were asking what would be the value two years from today three years from today it means that we are looking into the future please i get in the point uh -huh. but if they tell you to yes, determine sir. something today because in this case we are giving the person the money today if you read the question it says that in return for cash today the person wants the money today, and therefore it is oh. present today. Present. Oh, okay. If it is future, oh, okay. if they say five years, what will be the value? That means we are going into the future. Two years. Yes. Are you getting the point? Yes. Right. That's how yes. we go about yes. it. Right. Thank you very much. Sir. You're welcome. Now, you realize that, okay, let me ask you okay, this question. What it means is that every year, how much would the roommate give to the, um, how much would the roommates pay in settlement of the debt every year? The roll amount. Two thousand five hundred. Okay. Uh -huh. What it means is that mm. in year one, okay, year one, you pay two thousand five hundred. In year two, hundred. Is that not so? This is what makes it an annuity: the constant amount of payment over a limit. Okay. Mm. Now, find. Look, listen to the question. He are moving away from annuity. Find the present value of this as a lump sum. So if you give me 2,500 in one year, how much is it in present terms? If you give me 2,500 in two years time, what is the value in present times? And if you give me 2,500, what is the value in present times? Okay, find it and tell me each one of them. Do you understand what I'm asking? Consider yeah. each one, one of them as a lump sum on its own. The year one is a lump sum on its own. Year two is a lump sum on its own. Year three is a lump sum on its own. And tell me what the values will be. Um, so, so the present value of these amounts. Yes. Yeah, each. Okay. Each one of them. Okay. So. Okay. So we are Oh, quickly, year one. Yes, any answer for year one? Using the same R. Okay, use the same R. Mm -hmm. It's 2,369.66. 
six nine point six nine point six six seven six seven okay is I getting the same answers? No. Yes. 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 Sir. Yes. Sir. yes sir. And do for the second year. So if you point it on the calculator, just go up there. Two thousand four hundred and ninety-two point four six. Come again. Two thousand what? Four hundred and ninety-two point four six. You know, I have not even calculated, but I know that figure there is a problem with it. Because see, uh, it's 2,246. Uh -huh. It should be smaller, right? 2,246. Yeah. It means if somebody tells you, I'll give you 2,500 cities in one year, and another person tells you that, I'll give you 2,500 cities in two years, you should go for the first option because that one will give you a higher present value. Okay. I get to the point. The person is now going to give the money to you. But would you want the, the, the person to hold on to that money for that long? Because the more the person holds on to your money, the, it loses value. Is that not so? Yeah. yeah. So do for the third year. 2,129. 2, 2,129. 2, So two thousand one hundred and twenty nine point zero three. Okay, that's the last one. Add all of them. Add all these figures. Remember, it is the same question that we are solving. It's the same question. Okay. Okay. Please, I had six seven four four point eight three. Six seven four four point eight three. Okay. Point eight three. Is that the same answer we had initially? Yeah. Yeah. So it is the same concept, you know, that's why it's in the present value ordinary annuity. They are not technically anything different, except that for annuity, we are saying that the cash flows are the same. This is how you get in the point. So if, let's say that the question was saying in year, formula, this is how you get in the point. You cannot use annuity formula because here the, the values are different. Can you see that? If this is 2,500, this is 3,500, and this is 4,500, you cannot use what? Annuity. You only have to use the lump sum. But then you do for each year and then add everything. Are, are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Uh, that is what we call the unequal um, cash flows. So if you, you invest and they tell you one year, they will give 500 cities, another year, they'll give 1,000 cities, and another year, 2,000. You have to discount each of them and add them. And uh, you can write them this over that plus this over that. Can you see that? So let's see, 500 over one plus R, whatever the R is. This, is, this will be one, 1,000, one plus R, 2,000, one plus R, then you go through it. This put together will be the total present value for the whole contract. Please, are you getting the point? No. Oh. If the, const the, the figures are constant cash flow, you can go by this same approach and get the same answer. Yes, please. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that if the cash flows are different, i.e., for example, this is 500, this is 1,000, this is 2,000, you cannot use the annuity formula. The annuity formula is used to simplify this type only when the cash flows are what the same. That's what makes it an annuity, right? Yes. But if they are not the same, then this is how you go about it. If it is 500 years and they are not the same, this is how you go about it. You put the figures there and do the normal, um, how do you call it? Discounting. You know we are discounting in this. Uh -huh. You find the present value using this approach. All right. So it is nothing difficult. Now, let me ask you this question. Yes, Aram, your hand was up. 
Yes, sir. I wanted to ask if the pass through is, is actually an equivalent. It's increasing by a given percentage over the period. Do you see this formula? No. No. Anytime it is increasing by a percentage. For example, year one, you, you have 1,000. And let's say the growth rate is 10%. So I, it will increase by 10%. In year two, what will you have? 110. Is that not so? Is that not so? Yeah. Huh. Year three, how much will you have? 10% of this is what? One, two, one, or something like that. You realize that the cash flows are different. And therefore, you cannot use the annuity formula. Remember the definition for annuity. It is a constant and regular cash flow fixed. It is the same amount over the years. That's why they say 2,500 per year. It means that it doesn't change. Two, five, two, five, two, five. If it becomes like this, then you have to do PV is equal to 100 over one plus R. Whatever the rate is, let's see 10% or 20%. You put it there. This is year one, so raise the power one. 110, one plus R raised to the power what? Two, because it is year two. Then plus, remember, if I only give you 110, two years, and tell you to find the present value, this is how you are going to do it. Just this, is that not so? If I give you just one figure, find the present value of an amount of 110 cities receivable two years from now. This is how you are going to do it. Is that not so? Raised to the power two, is that not so? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, so because there are so many things in addition to that, you just do each one of them and add. In year three, you do one, two, one over one plus R. R can be 5%, 10%, 20%, raised to the power three. When you finish with us, you will get the answer. But if the answers, the values are 100, 100, you can go by with 100 on each of them. Or because the series of cash flows are the same, you can use the ordinary annuity formula. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, sir. Yes. Um, some people have raised their hands. I, I did not see. Those who raised their hands, where are you? Yes, sir. Um, please, can I talk? I'm Yes, go ahead. Okay. What if the cash flows are the same, but then there are different rates for each year? Can you use the annuity? No. Or you use what you are doing now? Yes. What okay. means is that if the, see, if you see in the annuity formula, there is only one R. That R is the same. So if, if you do C over R and the R is 10%, if you go to the discount factor, one plus R, is the power n this r is the same as this when you are doing annuity is that not so yes please. Uh -huh. but if the, the rates are different let's say in year one they give you a rate of 10 percent in year two they give you a rate of three, uh, 13 percent and let's say the cash flow c year one is 100 and year two is even 100 let's say r3 is 12 percent and this is also 100. Yes, the con these are constant cash flows, but you cannot use, which of the R's are you going to use? <laughs> you, you cannot use one. So you go by the second formula, which is PV is equal to 100 over 1.1, i1 plus 0 0.1, okay? Plus, then you still do 100 over 1 plus 0 0.13, 0 0.13, Raised to the power two. Okay. Then, sorry. Sorry, I, I'm writing at the. I'm, I'm writing at the extreme end of my. Listen. So you do hundred over one plus zero point one, plus hundred over one point one plus zero point one three all squared plus 100 over one plus 0 0.12 raised to the power three. I get to them. Even though this is an annuity, the rates, something is different. Okay, it's different. So you cannot use that. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Okay? 
Yes, please. Okay. Hold on a second. <laughs> That is not COVID, eh? it is a normal industry. All right, there's any question? Okay, so let me also ask you another, another question. Let me ask you. Now, year one, we'll give you 100. Year two, 100. Year three, 100. But in year four, Year four, I'll give you 200. Your rate is equal to 5%. Okay. Determine the present value. These are all in future. Remember, year one, year two, year three are all in future. Now, determine the present value for this, <clears throat> this thing. Let me see. Okay, what two options are available to you? Yes, anybody. How can you go about this? Anita, so, yes. You can decide to use the... The first, the recent, it is the same thing, 100, 100. You can, use, you can decide to use the annuity formula. Then when you're okay. done, you find 200, the normal formula, then you add both of them. Good. Yes, Anita, your hand was also up. Good. Uh, who spoke? So I'm the one. Come again. Me, me. Ah, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Mention your name, eh? <laughs> Fifi. Are you Fifi? I want the name that you are using on this. It is, I use three dots. Three dots. Okay, three dots. But what's your name? Piki. 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 What been, what, why is it more What What been rough? Yes, Anita. Yeah, I was also about to say that. And you Anita, would... what's being? What's what being? Would... Go ahead. <laughs> you would use the annuity formula for the first three years. Then after that, you use the normal um, present value formula for the 200. That's what I've seen. Then you add. Is that not so? Yeah, then you add. E you see exactly. The same exactly. Somebody who also wants to work can use the normal formula for each one of them. Is that not so? Yes. 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 You still have the same answers. All right. So, yes. uh, Rabna, let's go to question number 10. Question 10. Hello, is Arabna on? Arabna. <clears throat> sir, please, do you want the question? Yes, please, question 10. No, sir, please. Please, does anybody have a challenge with us? Just let me know so that I explain to you. You know that the first three hundreds, okay, hundred, hundred, hundred is a series of payments. And so it means it's an annuity. So we can use an annuity formula for the first three years. But the 200, it is in the year four, but it's not part of the annuity. So we have to do that one second and then come and add. Please, are you, are you getting the point? Is everybody clear with that? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, now, good. Let's look at question 10. Can you zoom in a little bit? I know some people cannot see it. Media, I can see, but some people cannot see it as well. Hello? Hello? So it seems Rosalie wants to speak. She's calling. Rosalie. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead and speak. Um, sir, please, you're saying that the 200 will be treated differently. Yes, yeah, it will be treated how like are you a lump. Treat that one? Lumps. How are you going to receive the 200? Oh, Rosalie. Okay. In which, in which are we going to receive yes. the 200? The year four. Then let me ask you a question. That 200, did they say 200 per year or just 200? 200. 
Okay. Now, um, if th that means that makes it a lump sum, is that not true? Yes. Now, so you know the formula we use for lump sum. Right, the normal formula. PV is equal no, to F V over. Did you join us yesterday? The normal okay. 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 Sure. Yes, Yes, I get it. Okay. All right. Uh, Rabina, yeah. let's let's go back to the, the question. Could you please zoom in a bit? Check the uh, the right corner of it. You see the zoom thing over there, Jennifer, so that you can zoom for us to see well. It's too much to read you. Okay. Yes, that's fine. Okay, yes. So the question is, what is the present value of a four-year ordinary annuity of 2,250 cities per year, okay? Plus an additional 3,000 at the end of year four, if R is 5%. So this is the question. The first part is an annuity, and then you get an additional 3,000 lump sum, one big money at the end of year four. If the rate is 5%, what is the present value? Start work. Do you, do you understand the question? Yes, please. Yes. Uh, then yeah. What is what is C, C in the question? 2,250. Your N in the question is what? Four. Four. R is five. R the 3,000 is what? 3,000 is a lump sum at the end of the it's a future value lump sum, right? Yes. So we have to bring it to present. So start with. Uh, you get E, 10,446. Who is speaking? Hey, Charlie. Why would Sima and Nasa say, Masa? Solve it. Show baby number. Sir, solve it too. I'll let you put your camera on and then you show it to the, the camera. Really? Hey. <laughs> and as a one draw. <laughs> All right. So please, I agree with him. It's E. Okay, somebody has had E. Anybody with a different answer or who has not finished? A lot of I you have also known. had E. I also uh, had E. You had what? E. Tell me the answer. E, 10,446. Uh -huh. What can we be? <laughs> yes, anybody with a different answer? Work you, good. Work you. Nana Addison, your answer has been received. That's, that's, that's good. That's good. Are we all getting the same answers? Say, please solve it. Oh, no. Or did you get a different answer? I don't have any problem solving that. Did you get a different answer? So that when I'm solving, I'll be able to no, tell you. I'm not even getting an answer. Oh, why? Check, check okay. the calculator. Check your C. Are you using present value formula? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So your C is 2250, right? And your R is 0. Yes. 0. 0.05, right? Yes. Then there is a bracket. One minus, and this is a fraction. So one over one plus 0. 0.05. All raised to the power four. Is that not so? 
Yes, yes. Uh, that is the annuity part. Then after you are done plus, you can press is is equal to get the annuity answer. Then you do plus. Now that three thousand is going to be received in fee. It's going to be three thousand over one plus zero point zero five raised to the power four. I'm pretty sure you are supposed to get the same answer as. As you, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. With the three thousand, which will be received at the end of year four, yes. will the interest rate affect that three thousand? Because that the three thousand will just like they will give it to you at the end of the year four. So why should yes. the interest rate affect the three thousand? Okay, so yes. So the question is, what are we determining? Present value. So somebody will give you some three thousand in four years' time. You want to find the value today. Did you get what you are trying to do? Yeah. If you say in four years' time, that one like I understand that the interest rate will affect it. But here, like the case, they are just saying uh, plus an additional three thousand at the end of year four, not okay. in four years' time. At the end. Yes. Of so how do you understand that? So I'm thinking like when the four, let's say. Like the four years has arrived, like they will give you that all the three thousand. Yes, that's what you are trying to see. So you you are in two, year two thousand and twenty, and they are saying that they will give you some money in two thousand and twenty-four. What is the value today? Today, today, today. What is the value in hours? How much? If you invest today, will you get three thousand at the end of year four? That that's the question. So that 3,000 will be given to you in year four, no problem. But if we are moving from year four to present, what do we do? Okay, okay. We discount. We discount. And when you are discounting, the R should be, this is, it is the R that makes the difference. Okay. Uh -huh. I get in the point. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Now, so everybody knows, yes, yes. Last question and then we move on. Yes, sir. I still didn't really get when we were trying to state the uh, Muslim. Oh, by then I was trying to solve, but I still because I'm getting like something different. Let's uh, it's really scary. Okay. Oh, say yeah. Please help me out. Let's talk together. Okay, so this is what we are saying. There is an annuity, four-year annuity, right? That one, do you have any problem with that? You don't? No, please. Okay. That says that every year they are going to pay you how much? 2250, is that not so? That's your cash flow. The cash flow means whether you are paying or you are receiving or you are drawing the same amount. That's the is constant throughout, okay? Let's see, 2250. So the total present value we are saying is going to be C over R, one minus DF, then plus an additional money, which will be which is a future value, one plus R raised to the power N. So it's more or less the series of payments and the lumps are put together in one question. That's all. Okay. Are you getting the point? All right. Yes, so here we have PV. The first part is an annuity. So we go by the annuity 2250 over what is the rate? What's the rate? Yeah. 0 0.05. 5. Five. Good. Then we have one minus one over one plus 0 0.05 raised to the power. Raised to the power. Three, eight, four. 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 Oh, okay. Plus, what is the future value you receive in year four? That big money. Three thousand. Three thousand. Three thousand over one plus the rate raised to the power four is year four. Okay. Is I getting the point? Yes. And then when you use the calculator, I'm pretty sure you get. The same answers that they had. That was 10, 4, 4, 6, something, something. 0.49. 0.49. Yeah, I think the mistake was 
you have you have seen where the mistake is. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so, so minus my class. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank All right. Now that is exactly the same as saying year one two two five zero. Year two 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 five zero. Year three two two five zero. And then year four three thousand. It's the same thing. I'm uh, sorry, there is another year, year, year four first, right? This is also um, 2250. And then the same year four, they will give you 3,000. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, please. Uh -huh. So you realize we can use a present value annuity for this, and then we do our normal thing for that. That's, that's the concept. And this concept is very, very important in what we are going to do next semester, because this is how we value a bond. What we just did, the PV, which is the price of a bond, mm, a bond, this price, P naught, it's the present value, is equal to CR1 minus DF, which is present value formula, right? Plus FV over one plus R, sorry, sorry, sorry R raised to the power N. Okay, when you buy a bond, you hold the bond and every period, say six months or every year, the government will give you what you call coupon. The coupon is the interest. Please start getting the point. So if you buy a bond, that is thousand CDs, okay? Thousand CDs or thousand dollars. And they will give you a coupon rate, a coupon rate, okay? Coupon rate, say 5% per annum, okay? What it means is that every year, how much will they give you? 50 CDs, right? Let's say it's going for four years. Is that getting the point? The coupon, it's like you have gone to buy an investment and you are saying that they, the interest they will give you, the interest they will give you, which we call the coupon rate, is 5%. Okay. So it means every year, how much will they give you? Yes, yeah, Samuel Nipa. Yes, yeah, sir. I wanted to say, can you please start your scenario again? I, I, okay. Yeah. Samuel. We are Samuel Nipa. So, me and Benjamin, what? <laughs> huh? Nipa? Say, say you are also Nipa. <laughs> ah, okay. The audio for you, Pam. Okay. All right. When you buy a coupon, this is what happens. A coup, uh, sorry, when you buy a bond, government of Ghana bond or a corporate bond or whatever, it's it works like a debenture, you know. So you they 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 put it's, it's it's a paper, something like a paper. You come and buy just like shares. When you buy, you give me thousand cities. I tell you that oh, every year I'll give you five percent on the money you have given me every year consistently five five percent for ten years, for twenty years, for thirty years. Okay. So if you give me 1,000 and I tell you that the rate is 5%, how much am I going to give you every year? 50. 50 cities. So that's your coupon. It's your interest. It's the money you put in your pocket. End of the four years, when the agreement is done, what do you expect? What do you expect that I do? Give me my money. Plus you tell me. Again. I give you your thousand and everybody goes his or her way. But remember, in the fourth year, what are you going to receive? The final year, what, what are you going to receive? You're going to say you receive your thousand. Remember, there's an interest in that year too. So you take that yeah. 50. Yeah. So you get to the point. Uh -huh. So that yeah. year one, you take 50, year two, you take 50, year three, you take 50. And then year four, you take your 50. Up beyond the 50, give me my money back. Our contract is dead. Okay, so it it works out this way. It works out this way. So let's use the four year scenario. Year one, they will give you fifty. Year two, they will give you fifty. Year three, they will give you fifty. Year four, they will give you fifty. And I came on the same year four. Now they will give you your thousand back. Please, are, are you okay? Yes, please. Uh -huh. In that case, if you want to determine the price of any security. Note, note, anytime you want to determine the price of a security, you discount all the financial benefits 
okay, all the financial benefits associated with that security to present. So you determine the present value of all the cash flows associated with that security. So if you buy a bond, the cash flow associated with the security is what? Coupon. Mm. Are you getting the point? Yes. The please. coupon. So, so here, the cash flow is 50, 50, 50, 50. And the final year, because they will give your money back, it is something you also receive. It is a benefit to you, right? Mm. Yes. You discount all of them. And by discounting, we go for what? Which formula? Present value. Value. Uh -huh. Yes, we are going for present value. We can do this over one plus R is the power one. But because this is in the, the same amount, it forms what? An annuity. Mm. Then we can go by the lump sum approach in doing the last one. So we can do C 50 over R, one minus DF, when we are given R and N, we know what to do, plus 1,000 over what? Yeah, one plus R. One plus R raised to the power of uh, N. N. This is what we call the price bond. This is how we determine the price of the bond. That is all. Mm -hmm. So they will give you all the scenario. A bond pays five, whatever, whatever, whatever. And the redemption value. When we say redemption value, on the day that the contract is ending, how much they are going to give you? Normally, they will give you either at par. So if you bought a thousand, okay, and then mm. they are giving you your thousand back, then it means that it is at par. The same value. Please, are you getting the point? Yes, please. If it is um, at a premium, it means that, oh, okay, you give us thousand. But when we are liquidating, when we are, when we are closing the contract, when we are redeeming, okay, we will give you, instead of thousand, we will give you thousand five hundred. It doesn't change anything. What it changes mm -hmm. is that this figure now becomes thousand five hundred. Is that not so? Mm -hmm. That is all. So whatever value they are going to redeem, that's what you put here. Please, are you getting the point? All right. So, so sir, that is what it's explained the premium. Sir, sir, please, does it mean that if it's at if it's at par? You're not going yeah. to find the pre the present value of it again. Like you are going to just add a thousand. No, 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 no. You find it. You do one plus one over R. You do okay. the same thing. It doesn't change. Okay. What I'm saying is that what does not change is is thus. This doesn't change. So okay. if this figure is eight hundred, just put eight hundred. If it is thousand, two thousand. If it's thousand two, thousand two. Okay. Now the so, premium. So, so with the premium to be stated in the question, right? Yes. Sometimes they will say that you bought um, um, the 10 at face value 1,000, but it will be redeemed at a premium of 20%. What it means is that you are going to get 20% on your money. That means this is going to be 1,200. Okay. Sometimes if you are fortunate, they will tell you you are going to redeem at 1,200. All that they mean is that put 1,200 instead of 1,000 here. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Yes, somebody said premium. Yes. Are you okay with the premium or I should go over the premium? Let's go back. Okay. Now, for the premium, I'm saying that you are going to buy a bond. Okay. When we say you buy a bond, this is what it means. Let's deal with um, government. Government needs money to finance its own. Build um, schools and all that. So they raise, they issue a bond. When they issue the bond, people like us, you, me, we go and buy. What we are essentially doing is that we are lending our money to the government. I.e., the government is borrowing. Please, are you getting the point? The government yeah. issues it. It's a paper. You go and buy the paper and give money to the government. So the government is borrowing from you. But why would you want to give your money to the government or a company? It is because you expect some returns on that money. Please, are you getting the point? The government is going yeah. to use the money, get some interest, pay you. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 for four years. And when it's, it's four years, you have to give me back my money because if you give me 50, 50, 50, 50 you have only given me 200 cities. Who on earth will give 1,000 cities? It's just 200 cities. So at the end of the fourth year, you will give me back my 1,000 cities. Is, is that okay? Yeah. That understanding is okay. Now, Sometimes the government can say that, oh, well, I, I took thousands of this from you. I've paid my 50, 50, 50 for the four years. But instead of returning the, just the thousand, I want to give you 1,200. That is what we call premium. So there's a premium of 200 CDs on it. Is, is that okay? 
Yeah. So in other words, yes. you've gained additional profits of 200 cities. 200 cities. That is one way. In fact, sometimes what they do is that they can even issue the bond at a discount. What they are trying to simply do is that, okay, the real value of the, the bond that you are buying is 1,000. But rather give me 800 cities today. I'll pay your 50, 50, 50 as though it is 1,000. When you are returning the money, I'll give you 1,000. That is also another way. So see, two options. It doesn't change the, the, the formula. It doesn't change the formula, it doesn't change anything, but look at the concept. I'm selling something that is 1,000 cities, okay? You come to buy and I say that, okay, don't worry. You give me 800, I'll give you the, the thing that costs 1,000. So you pay 800 to me. I'll pay your um, coupon on 1,000. Okay, I'll pay the coupon on 1,000, on 1,000, on 1,000. So you will still be getting your 50, 50, 50, 50, 50. When the time is due for me to refund the money to you, how much did you give me? 800, right? But now if I'm refunding, I'll give you 1,000. That is, that is one way. Uh -huh. We will get to bond next week. I want to just, you know, this question, the question 15 we just solved. Oh no, I'm sorry, the question, uh, was it 10? We solved, was to be able to push you in a way to think like we are thinking now and prepare you for determination of bond prices. Uh -huh. So if we're able to solve this question, you know, confidently, then determining bond, uh, the price of bonds generally should not be a difficult thing for you to do. Is I getting the, the, the question, the point? Yes, please. So if they give you 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, and the last value is 1,000, you know how to go about it. Use um, ordinary uh, annuity formula plus the lump sum formula, lump and, that, sum. and that is all. So we will take bond and deal with bond next week. That's when we will start actual work. But we'll be applying these principles. That's why I've taken my time to go back through this for you to get an understanding of what is going to happen. We, we will determine the price of bonds, the price of shares, or what we call stock, you know, and all that. We determine cost of equity, um, cost of debt, and then the weighted average cost of capital. We do all those things, okay? So it's, it's going to be interesting. But you just follow what we are doing now and appreciate it. All right. Yes, um, I see two hands up. Sir, please, question. Yes, go ahead. What's your name? Francesca. Francesca. <laughs> Who named you? Was it? <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, for what's your question? Sir, please, with the premium. Eh? Premium, yes. No, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Is it the value added to the amount? That's called the premium or the whole amount at the end of the four year or something, the end of the year. Oh. You get my question. It's, yes, I get your question. But it is the extra amount that you get, that's called premium. Okay, the extra amount is called premium. Yes. So if they tell you, you regime at a premium of 1,200, what you are simply saying is that, yes, your 1,000 is there, but they are giving you 200 cities in addition. That's all. Or sometimes oh. you can simply say that you are going to redeem at 20%. Okay, that's, that's all. Okay. And the, the rates or the money be given, that will be given to you is the coupon rate or something. Oh, so what they will say is that it's just like when you are going for a loan. Mm -hmm. When you go for a loan, the bank will give you, let's say, 1,000 cities and tell you pay interest of 10% um, 10 per annum. So every year, how much are you going to pay? 100. Uh -huh. 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, right? And then after yeah. the... For, let's say it's for four years. After the fourth year, what do you do? Mm -hmm. You can give them back their thousands. Is that not so? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's something like that that we are doing now. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So don't worry. You will start bond afresh. I mean, it's a topic on its own. Determination of uh, bond prices and all that. We'll do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank but you. it follows the same thinking. You know, that's why I wanted to introduce it so that you appreciate what we are going to do. All right. Okay. All right. Are we okay? Yes, I, sir, have to... a, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Can you explain why the concept of uh, discounting the coupon value and adding it to the redemption, the discounted value of the redemption uh, value gives the bond price? Yes. 
So, okay, so now remember that if you buy a bond, you are going to expect some returns. Is that not true? So it's more or less a cost and benefit analysis. Okay. Okay, cost benefit analysis. In the worst case scenario, your cost should be equal to your benefits. Is that not so? Hello. Yes, please. Yes, please. In the worst case scenario, your 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 cost should be equal to your benefits. Now, the cost is the price you pay for the bond today. Is that not so? Yeah. So that is a present value. You know that today you are you are buying something today. It's a present value, right? Yes. Now. When are you going to receive the benefits? And what are the benefits you are going to receive? So the first question is, what are the benefits you are going to receive? The coupons, is that not so? Yes. Which is constant over the period. And so we say C, right? Yes. And because it is constant over the period for a period of time, it forms an annuity. Please, are you getting the point? Yes. So all that we have to do is to look at all the benefits that were accrued to us and discount them from the future to the present then we can compare so we will do c over our present value ordinary annuity plus then at the end of the period we will get our money back that one we have agreed on what to do okay so we are trying to bring all of this to the present so that we can compare it to the present value price that we are paying if if the benefit is equal to this then it is the minimum we should pay for it. So if, if this is five CDs and we do all of this and we get four CDs, will you buy or will you not buy? Let's say you do all this calculation and the value is four CDs and they're telling you to buy the assets or the bond at five, five CDs. Will you buy or will you not buy? I won't buy. Why? Because, because then... The cost the exactly. So that's the whole concept, concept of this. Please, are, are you getting the point? Yeah. Huh. In the worst case scenario, we would try to determine the true price. You know, normally we would draw a curve and the price should be falling on the curve. So if you calculate and you get five, well, then it is good. Please, are you getting the point? But normally, normally, if you, you have to get an, because see, because they will be giving you the 50 cities each year, when you get 50 CDs, do you know you can also invest for three years? Yeah. Up to the fourth, yes. You, yes. Have to, you get another 50, invest for two years, another 50, invest for one year. That's why you can't invest. So that is what gives you some benefits. Please, are, you, are, you getting, are you getting the point? Yes. They will be giving you 50 CDs each year. When you get that 50, when the government pays that 50 CDs, okay, you go and buy some TVs and leave it. Pay you another 50 cities, then buy another T bill, leave it. You'll be getting more money. But on the face of it, when you calculate the price and determine the, the benefits and they do not match, then don't, don't, don't even buy. That's the whole point. Please, are you oh, getting the point? That, that's yes. why we do that. So it's a cost benefit analysis. And uh -huh. anytime it is not equal to it, don't buy. Don't buy. Okay. So if the government tells you, we'll give you 50 cities, 50 cities, 50 cities for 10 years and redeem at the same, then you do your calculations and determine how much they are selling. Is it a real price or um, it is not? Sometimes when they do, they calculate the, the, the price of the bond, okay? And it is 10 CDs or 100 CDs. So they'll tell you that the bond is selling at 100 CDs, but, but we will sell it at a discount of 20%. So they will be actually selling the, the, bond, the, the bond at what? 80 cities. So that you are making, even right from the onset, you are making a gain of 20 cities. This is what we call selling at discount. What is so? The Toby, the Pudi, the Bonda. What has it? Yeah. Yes, good. So that is the whole, why we do what we do, okay? It, it, it is to help you Sorry. as a finance manager take very sound financial decisions okay so that you don't you know entirely run the company into bankruptcy okay right. okay yes. sir. also uh, like then like if the bond is issued at uh uh we'll talk about then, bond later so if it is bond bond but go ahead go ahead 
when it is issued at discount and then premium, like mm -hmm. which which of the two parties benefits any which regards? Which of the two benefits? How? Which, which party benefit when it is issued at premium? Is it the uh, 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 the lender that benefits or the borrower? And when it is issued at discount? Oh, I don't understand. Okay, so, so just come again. And then I'm I'll... using the scenario you just gave that, like uh, the bond price is like 100 CDs, and then they say it will be issued at discount, and then you will pay like 20 percent, and you will pay 80 CDs. With this one, probably it means like uh, the 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 one buying the bond will benefit. But yes. what of if it is issued at premium, and then it means like, like as in the bond price. No, it's, it is it is redeemed at premium. Uh -huh. Say that one. Oh, redeem. Uh -huh. The re the premium is when you are redeeming. You can also issue at a premium, fine. But normally, if you issue at a premium, unless it is a five-star bond where people know that oh, when they buy it, good, they will get a lot of money. They will not come and buy. Because see, you have to motivate people to buy what you are, you are selling. Is that also? That's why people give discount. Even the market women, they do that. Right? The thing is 100 cities, they tell you, oh, bring 90, I'll give it to you. you. You get the point. That is at the discount. But when you are redeeming, when it is time for them to pay back the money to you, that instead of paying thousand back to you, they give you let's say thousand five hundred. Then we say we have redeemed at a premium of five hundred cities. Now, the whole concept as to whether which one is beneficial or which one is not beneficial it depends on the calculations that you will make. Because if they sell at a discount today, remember it is a savings to you, right? If it is thousand, and then they tell you to buy eight hundred. The savings of 200 cities, right? Yeah. You can decide to grow that 200 cities in four years and see how much, if you invest that 200 cities, you will get. I get in the point. And yeah. compared to when they are giving you a, red, a, a higher redemption value, you know. So that is because I would prefer if a company tells me that um, they are selling to me at par, but I'll redeem at a premium of. 1,200. It means that in four years' time, I will get 200 cities. Is that not so? Yeah. Is that not so? Yes. Yes, I, I can discount that 200 cities to today's terms and see what the value is. And another company can say that, oh, for us, we are not going to redeem at par. What we are simply going to do is to give you a discount today, 200 cities. Between the two, which one will you prefer? 200 cities today or 200 cities in four years' time? Which one will you prefer? Not today. Yes, 100 cities today. Because if you grow it up to four years, it will be bigger than two, uh, 200 cities. Okay, so for you to do this analysis, you know, to see which one will be beneficial and which one will give you the maximum return, then you go into it and buy. Okay, again, you have to look at the company you are buying from. If it is government, no problem. But if it is a company, then the company must have a high reputation for such transactions. And it should be a reputable company because you are committing another company's funds, you know. So you are likely to, um, you know, drain the company and let it go into bankruptcy. Even if it is your own money, the same analysis must apply. You know? And if you are going to buy a bond, they will give you all the things that you are supposed to know. And then you use it to calculate, okay? As we move on, when we start bond itself, we see, we see so many nice things playing out there and then these questions can be properly addressed. Okay, are we okay? Are we okay? Yes, please, thank you. Okay, all right. Okay, so let us not forget our PV formula. So I'm going to narrow in and then we'll be doing more of present value, present value, present value, okay? In finance, we like to do a lot of present values. So do not forget present value. If nothing at all, the present value should be known. Now let's go to question number 11. Question 11. Rabna, can you show us question 11? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. Now, can we all see the question? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Suppose you end a 
sorry, 275,000 bonus this year. Let us end there. That figure, what is it? Is it, okay, yes, what is it? The cash flow. Present value. Exactly. Yes, I know it's a cash flow, but is it a present value or a future value? That's the question. You end a 275,000 bonus this year. Is it a present value or a future value? Present. This is a value. present value, right? So yes, we know a certain present value is equal to that. You can write that mm -hmm. one down. Okay. And invested it at um 8.25 percent per year. What is that? The 8.25 is what? Rate. Dangerous. Okay. Rate. How much could you withdraw at the end of each? At the end of each year, that's what's supposed to be here. For the next 20 years, that's how the person is supposed to read. You know? So your N is what? N 20. N is 20. So you know N, you know R, you know a certain PV. What do you think mm -hmm. finding? What, what are they telling us to find? The The C. Please, are you getting the point? Yeah. Huh. So that alone tells you which formula to use. So you use the present value ordinary annuity formula because it's at the end of each year. Okay. Present value ordinary annuity formula. But the present value that normally we find has been given as what? 275,000. You know your N, you know your R, and you are asked to find C. Quickly, let's start. Yes. Say. Say. Yes, go ahead. Look, say, but how do you know if. How do you know this question is an annuity question? In the lump sum, okay, they will simply tell you the present value is this. What would be the value, the future value? Mm -hmm. That's what they would have asked. Because that yeah. formula is simply PV is equal to FV over 1 plus R raised to the power N. So if mm -hmm. R and N is given, and they have given you PV, they would have simply told you to find what? FV. Mm. Are you getting the point? They will yes. have told you what, how much is it going to be. Mm. Here, they did not say how much is it going to be. He said, how much could you withdraw at the end of each period? So you're looking at a constant withdrawal over a period. And that okay. is the C. So okay. which, of the, which, which formula am I doing? It is not future value. It is present value, C. But do I use ordinary or annuity due? Each at the end of each year, so ordinary. Please, are you, are you, that's how you analyze the question. Are you okay? Yes, please. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's use present value, ordinary annuity formula, and find um, that. Okay, let's go to the screen and solve this together. You can start solving in your closed sets, then I'll take the answer. Okay, start work. These things, I expect that you simply can use your calculators and punch them. The answer is A. I, I, you know, I don't okay. like A, B, C, D, those things. Just tell me what the answer is. 28,532.45. Okay. I'm sure I can say now, Miyuhu, Masa, catch me. 28,532, that's okay. Anybody with a different answer? Because I am having a different yeah, answer. Coming. Good. I also had A. You also had A. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next person. You said you also had A. Tell me what the figure is. <laughs> 28,532. That's fine. Hey, more being power. Mugo sway. Say, what that class night one day, and then you announce your day, Jai. Come solve the question and tell me. Say, if you had been taught all these things, like the exams, and can be to my pass you. You all had a <laughs> okay. Twenty thousand five hundred eighty-four. But what? The last person who spoke. What did you say? Twenty-eight thousand. Uh huh. Twenty-eight thousand five hundred eighty-four. Five hundred eighty-four. Yeah. 
<laughs> no problem. No problem. We will look at where the problem is coming from. We may be able to. But the 285 is correct. I think the problem is the last two digits. Um, okay, yes, let's quickly. Yes, yes. For those of you who said A, your answer is correct. All right. So, but let's, let's solve. We know that our present value formula is C over R, 1 minus DF. Is that not so? Now, our present value has been given in the question as what? 2, 7, yes, yes, square, five. 2, 7, 5, Ten. 1, 2, 3. Okay. And C is not given. C is what we are going to look out for. How much we are going to receive or withdraw constantly over a period or pay constantly over a period. That is our C. And I've told you whether you are receiving or paying or withdrawing, if it is at the end of each year, it's still C. Nothing changes, right? Now C over, what is your R in the question? 8.25. 8, sorry, 0 0.0825. 0 uh -huh. 1 minus 1 over 1.0825. 0 0.0825. Uh -huh. Raise to the power, what is N? N? 20. Okay. All right. So we can use the calculator to punch all of all of that and then have your answer. If you want to do mathematics, that's fine anyway. But just tell us what our C should be. C is equal to what? 28,000. Five hundred and thirty-two. Two eight five three two. Please, somebody had a different answer with eight four ending. Please, have you confirmed where the mistake was? And say, I'm so old. Checking as a twenty-eight five eight four now. One says no. Twenty-eight five three two one. No affair, no. I got poke over there. It's a bit too rough. Forty five four four. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Please, have you been able to correct that mistake? That was. If this calculator works, we just check the calculator, and you will find. Please, are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, please. Okay. Now, Rabina, take us back to the um, questions. Question twelve. I want us to look at question twelve. Um, so, was the exam supposed to be difficult? No, I mean. Was it difficult? Not hmm. when you wrote it, but looking at it now. Now it is not difficult, but at first it was difficult. Okay. So as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. It was never difficult. But for me, it was voluminous. I have to read more and so but it is all good. All right. Yes, question 12. Mm-hmm. Your aunt wants to retire and has three seven five thousand. She expects to live for another twenty five years, and to earn seven point five percent on her invested funds. How much could she withdraw at the end of each year? At the end of each of the next twenty five years, and the account will go zero. I mean, if it goes, if you withdraw everything, it goes zero. So no problem with that. So. So that this today is that not so? So that is what 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 value what what name you have the formula in mind? What is three seven five thousand? Your aunt has you saw your aunt wants to retire and has she has the money three seven five. When does she have one? Today, is that not so? So that is your present value, is that not so? Hello? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And she expects to live for another, another 25 years. What is that? That 25, what is it? N. Okay. That is your N. And to N 7.5% on her invested funds. What is that? Oh. Interest rate. Oh. Oh. 
Okay. How much could she redraw at the end of each? So the end of each means that something is going to happen. Is that not so? End of each. All yes, right. Sir. So that that's that question tells us yeah, to yeah. find something. What? End of each. C. So how much we could exactly? So you are finding C. You know PV. You know N. You know R. And you are asked to find C. Which formula are you going to go for? Present value. Ordinary because it's at the end, ordinary, right? Ordinary, ordinary annuity. annuity. You put the formula there, put the values in there, find C. You are done. So this one was a calculator work. You just put the calculator there, point, 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 and give an answer. Please, are you, are you okay? Please. Hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. 641.5. 641.5. 3. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, is everybody having that answer? Hey, that one can be me. Me say, "Mumu, that one can be me. Can be me, yeah." Hello. Say, I had it. And just say, you can be one that's not working. Who never from Francisco? That's the Annie. No, please. Huh? <laughs> okay, so that answer is correct, right? Yes, please. All right, so that is that. Now let's simply um, look at question 13. And if somebody reads the question and understands, let the person, um, you know, tell me how we want to go about, we, we have to go about that. Okay, so listen carefully. You have a choice of 15 million cities today. What is that? PV. The present value. Present value. Uh -huh. Now, so that is one money, or so it's two things. Okay, and mm -hmm. I mean, you become independent between the two. Um, choices if their PVs are the same, right? If I'm giving 50 million today, or give you something where when you do the PV, it's also coming to 50 million, then there is no problem. Or a 20 year annuity of 10, 50,000, okay? With the first payments coming one year from today. First payments coming one year from today. What type of annuity is that? Ordinary annuity. An ordinary annuity. With what is the C? C is. C is fifty thousand. Yes, C is the one million and fifty thousand, right? That's that's the uh, the C. You saying that that C with the first payment coming from one year, and then your N. Twenty. The question is at what rate of return is built into the annuity? Okay, what rate is built into the annuity? I.e., what rate will give us if we do all the present value annuity for twenty years? Will give us fifteen million. So that will become indifferent because we have a choice of a present value of fifteen million, or twenty year annuity with ten fifty each year. So what do you, what do you think we have to do? Yes, in what is an idea? Yes. So you will find you use your annuity formula, the ordinary annuity formula, mm -hmm. but this time you are finding the value of R in the formula. Yes. So what is your PV? Our PV will be the 15, 15 million. Exactly. Exactly. Please do you understand. You have a choice of 15 million today. That's present value. Mm -hmm. Or an annuity. 
of 1050,000 with the first payment coming one year from today. What is your R? So 15, uh, 50 million is equal to C over R, one minus DF. That is all. Mm -hmm. So we quickly, let's see what the answer may be. I use the calculator to point. Mm -hmm. you, you'll be done. Now, anytime you are solving a question of this nature, you can ignore all the three zeros. Mm -hmm. All the three zeros for each of the figures. If you leave one, the answer will be different. But if you leave the three zeros out for each of them, the answer will be the same. But it, lets, it, it makes you move a bit faster. Okay. All right. So you can do 15,000 and 1,050. Nana Addison, yes. Go ahead. Um. So when you do the change of subjects, you get stuck at a point. So oh, point yes. it on your calculator. Why do you want to worry your head being I, change of subject? I think I tried. So I, I used the trial and error. I tried to put like all the mm -hmm. percentages in the in, in that case, in that case, you will not bring the 15 million. Is that not true? If you have been trying it. No, no, no. If you are doing try or uh, error, then you don't have to do 50 million is equal to. You only mm. put the values in there to see if you get 50 million. 50 million, yeah. Do, do you know? Oh, yes. No, but what I did was I, I used the 50 million, but then when I did the try and error, I made sure each side was equal, the right side was equal to the left side to make sure if the right side is equal to the left side, it means that that is the correct weight. What, did answer, what answer did you get? Uh, three points. Four, four percent. Okay. Well, I don't know if you are correct, but yes, anybody who has used a calculator to punch, punch is who won't just say, punch BB. Yeah. Three point four four. Three point four four percent. Are you okay? Okay, are you okay? Hello, is everybody okay? Yes, please. All right, let's go to question 14. We are using the, the time to, the rest of the time to solve the questions, okay? So you get a better understanding. Now, next, uh, in our next meeting, we are moving straight to what you do next semester. But like I said, if the foundation is not strong, it's more or less building on something that is not uh, even existing. How can you build uh, a mansion in the air with no structure down to, to just collapse? Okay. So um, question 14, what annual payment must you receive in order to earn a 6.5% rate of return on a perpetuity that has a cost of 1250? So which formula are we going to use? Present value perpetuity. Huh? Simply oh. perpetuity formula. Yes, perpetuity formula. Is that is that not correct? Yes. Uh -huh. So perpetuity, you know, P is equal to C over R, right? Oh, yes. They are giving us R. Is that correct? Is the R yes. given in the question? Yes, please. At 6.5, right? Yes. Okay. Now the one two five zero. What is it? The perpetuity. Yes. Is that a P or the C? The, the, the P. P. The P. The P. So you now have P. You have R. Find C. That should not be a problem, right? Yes. Uh -huh. If you have P and R, C should not be a problem. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Solve and let me know what the answer is. This one, I'll call names. When you finish, uh, you, now by now you, are, you should have finished. Let me see. Some people, they will not, never, never talk. Maybe she shall move. Oh, Machibaku. Claudia. I'm said the answer is 81. 
2.25 Ghana cedis. Is that Claudia? Yeah. Uh-huh. What being said, Mutia, that is correct. Okay, so that is that. We simply do a multiplication, okay? One two five zero by zero point zero six five, and that's that should give you the answer. Cross multiplication. You see why they taught you cross multiplication in KG one, or they didn't teach you in KG one because they knew that when you get to university level, they will use it. That's why you are, you are using it here. So for those of you who keep asking those things that we learned in GSS, if it takes four boys to weed a plot of land, then what do we use it for? That's Okay, let's move on. Okay. Okay, let's look at question 15, which is also an interesting question. Okay, you are offered a chance to buy an asset for 7250. What is that figure? Present value. It's a present value. And I'm, I'm telling you, it, tell you, I have this car. If you want to buy the price is seven two five zero. That's the, the, cost, the, the, the cost of it, present value today. Because are you getting the point? But when yes, you get sir. that asset, it is expected to produce a cash flow of seven fifty at the end of year one, mm -hmm. thousand at the end of year two, eight fifty at the end of year three, and mm -hmm. six two five zero at the end of year four. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's yes, the sir. rate of return? If you, you if you bought this asset, as you'll be able to tell me. Year one, this, year two, that, mm -hmm. year three, that, year four, that, then the, the, the cost, present value, just pick the figures. And mm -hmm. If you are ready, then you let me know so that we move. I'm using somebody's um, exam script here. The person has an index number mm. <laughs> that ends with 39. Mm. Who said E? <laughs> it is that person who? <laughs> who said E? Oh, who are in Kameka? Uh -huh. Those of you who have used your index numbers and then your names are attached to it. I see all of them here. <laughs> that same index number, there is 11 somewhere. 11. One, one. Hey. Hey. Senior has a wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Please, who is that? Just tell me. That's so why I'm using your script. Hundred. Hmm. Wow. Why are we? <laughs> okay, okay, that's just on a light note. All right. So we are saying that the present value is what? Seven. Give me the figures. Seven thousand two hundred and fifty. Seven two five zero. Five zero. Seven two five zero. Okay, mm. and it's expected to produce a cash flow. Okay, it's expected to produce a cash flow of year one. How much? Seven fifty. This is seven fifty. Year two. Thousand. One thousand. Year three. Eight hundred and fifty. Eight five zero. Year four. Six thousand two hundred and fifty. Six two five seven. Five zero. Okay. Now, if if you want to see if this is true, what do you do? You discount all of these, right? Yes. Is that not so? So you would have done seven two five zero. Call to seven fifty over one plus R. Mm. Raise the power one. Is that also? Yes. Plus 1,000 uh, over, over 1 plus R. 1 plus R raised to the power 2 mm. plus 850 50. over 1 plus yeah. R raised to the power, three. the power 3. 
plus six two five zero. Is sorry, one plus r raised to the power four. Four. This is all you are, you are supposed to do. Is that not so? I use the calculator yes. to punch. If you spend time in the examination or trying to make out the subject, maybe we not use your back. I say we're asked to show working. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you can't show working, what do you do? You just punch and uh, who, who is going to mark that show working? If hey. we did not, if we did not give you those papers, <laughs> you people would have come back to complain to us that, oh, you didn't have any paper to show working on, so you were suffering. We give you papers mm -hmm. to show working in it. And so you are working. You are doing uh, binomial theorem. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we're saying yeah. working. Not by itself. I mean, come home. <laughs> Punch. Use the calculator. Punch. So say you are not marking the workings too. Ah, what is there in the workings that we should mark? What are you doing there? Mm. You cannot use <laughs> the wrong workings to get the right answer. <laughs> I said I should have put that. I should have told that. Because you missed that. Yeah, then. Ah. And Monsopadi, it's a good answer. I'm going to use the calculator to point, finish all the, uh, the, the questions. If it's in that book. They, they, they never told us to, uh, to show what they just told us to solve. That is for rough work. That is not rough work. Yes, yes, that, that, that's what I'm trying to say. So they are uh, we, we, we will cancel it and write scene. You know, scene. <laughs> Who has the time to go look at all those things that magic you are doing in your script? You don't have the time. Yes, what answer are you getting? Is it that your calculators are new, so you don't know where the, the things are or what? You understand? Hmm. I'm typing. So if I finish and you people have not finished, then it means that there's something wrong. We can't see the possible answers. Sure. Come there. Come there, Sure. Just stay. If you are wrong, there's no. I've told you in my class. There's nothing like a right or wrong answer. So if you give us something that is wrong, we will all work back to it to get the right answer. Just feel confident. Say it. 6.05%. What do you know? Next. Can be B or can be B? Can be B? What do you that can be? <laughs> oh, anybody with a different answer or the same answer? Let's see. Now, everybody should go to the chat room and type this or answer there. I'll check. Go to the chat room, chat, make everybody see what you are punching, and then. I'm going there. Okay. You, I'm sure, can, can love or something like that. You didn't work. When somebody wrote 6.05, you wrote the same thing. Okay, right. Everybody should write. Uh, from cool. You can see from here that you didn't work. Now, now you Hey, chairman, are you sure you worked it? Okay, go ahead. Next. I see Andrews. Andrews, I've seen your work. Okay, Ken, just, just on the lighter side. Um, um, Susie. Okay. I'm checking something. Um, nah. Okay. So we all seem to understand, right? It means yeah. that... So please how do we make out the subject? Oh, you use binomial expansion. This this now one who has the time to go and do this? If if they want
our class end. Okay. Sorry, I think uh, my hand mistakenly pressed on something. So, do you hear me? Yes, sir, we can okay. hear you. Right. So, um, for whoever was asking about the expansion, you know, it's a very long thing that you're supposed to do. You know? But um, so far, we have virtually tackled, um, if not all, a majority of the time value of money questions in your exam. I'm sure there may be one or two left somewhere, okay? Um, you may want to go in there, look at it, and then use the knowledge that you have acquired now to solve them. Take your time, analyze the question, break it down, pick the right formula, put the values in there, and you'll get your answer, okay? Is, is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you before we leave is a perpetuity with growth. But I want to defer that one to our next meeting when we start doing with um, equity and all those things. We, we will use it there, okay? Okay. Okay, sure. Right. So I would want to end the class here. Um, please do remind me that I will, I will teach you that before we proceed to the next um, topic, okay, which we are beginning next week. Please, are you okay? Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, it's been a wonderful class. I'm grateful for the cooperation and the support. Um, see you on Monday, okay? Okay, sure. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Bye.